There's nothing quite like the beauty of a dark night sky. Thousands of stars visible, maybe the Milky Way or the Northern Lights. With a telescope or a camera, the galaxies and clusters and nebulae are within reach. But for most of us, a chance to see or observe from a dark sky is a special treat. Something that doesn't happen every day or even every year. But the sky is still up there, even in the city. If only there was a way to open a window through that light pollution and glimpse even just a tiny bit of the splendor of space without leaving my neighborhood. In this video, I'll show you that window. In fact, I've got it right here in my hand, a narrow band filter. This is our ticket past all that light pollution out into the depths of space so we can see some of these amazing objects even from our biggest and brightest cities. So come on, let's do some urban astrophotography. Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick and I am an astrophotographer in the city of Chicago. And in this video today, I wanna to show you how I do that, how I get these images of amazing objects in space, even from the light polluted skies of the city. Now, if you're already into astrophotography, a lot of this won't be new to you, but I'm also gonna walk through some of the gear that I use. So I'll give you a little bit of a background on that. And for those of you who are just getting into astrophotography or maybe you're just curious about how all this stuff works, you're gonna get a little peek behind the curtain. But first, a little background about myself. I've been an avid amateur astronomer for about 20 years, and I was always intrigued by astrophotography, the idea of capturing an image of what I saw through the eyepiece, or maybe of getting an image of even more than I could see. During college, I would cut out images from astronomy magazines and make them into collages on my wall, and I wondered if I could take images like that. I started with astrophotography on film, which is pretty difficult. I was able to get some wide angle shots of the stars and constellations, even the Andromeda Galaxy and the Pleiades star cluster. Also shooting through my telescope, I was able to get a few quick exposures of the moon. A few years later, I acquired a DSLR camera and I kept coming back to this idea of taking pictures of space. The moon was always a great target, even from the city. And eventually as I improved, I was able to get some images of the planets. I also nabbed a few shots of the International Space Station. And these are all photos that you can take today with relatively modest equipment. And in future videos, I'll walk you through how it works. When I could get to a dark sky, I attempted a few pictures of nebulae and galaxies through my telescope by taking 30 second or even one or two minute exposures. Looking back now, these don't look particularly good and the limitations of my equipment, especially the mount, became pretty apparent. But I was hooked on deep space imaging. Now the problem was I had to do this from a dark sky as far as I knew. Imaging in Chicago just wasn't all that feasible. And going to a dark sky from Chicago, maybe it would happen once a year or so, and that trip didn't always align with a good moon phase, or the weather didn't cooperate, perhaps I had an equipment failure, and it eventually started to get just a little bit frustrating, putting so much pressure on this one trip per year, and very slowly increasing and developing my skills as we went along. So I started to put so much pressure on it that it began to feel a little bit less fun and more just like work and frustration. So I started to do some research. I was reading more and more about ways to take shorter exposures and stack them digitally. And I started watching YouTube videos showing how to do the processing and what equipment would be especially good. And I started to realize with the right equipment and the right know-how, I could start to take the pressure off of those dark sky trips. I could image from the heart of the city right outside my front door. And in doing so, I could get so confident and comfortable with my equipment that when I did get an occasional dark sky outing, I could make the most of it without the worry of another lost opportunity. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go into detail about how all of my equipment works, but the foundation of any good astrophotography setup is gonna be the mount. I have an iOptron SEM40 mount, which is a computerized mount it's capable of pointing accurately to objects in the sky and also accurately keeping the telescope centered on that object for hours at a time or returning to the same framing nights, weeks, or even years later. For my telescope, I use a Celestron Rasa 8 scope, which allows me to capture images very quickly, many times faster than with other telescope designs. 
The camera I use is an ASI 1600mm Pro from ZWO. It's a cooled, monochrome astrophotography camera. It's very sensitive to the faint trickles of light coming in from these distant objects. I cool the chip electronically to negative 15 degrees Celsius. There's also a smaller camera that looks through this smaller telescope to pick a guide star in the field of view, and that helps keep the telescope pointed in exactly the same spot. I've also got an electronic focuser that keeps the whole setup in pinpoint focus through the night. And tying it all together is the ASI Air Plus, which allows me to control the mount, scope, electronic focus, guide scope, and camera all together in one place, and best of all, using a mobile device like my smartphone. But even with all of that, astrophotography from the city would be possible, but would take a lot more effort and integration time to get a good image. And for certain objects, it might just be out of the question. But that brings us back to this window on the universe, the narrowband filter. Narrowband imaging works from the city because instead of gathering the entire spectrum of visible light, or even say a third of it that I would get with a red filter, with this hydrogen alpha filter, I'm only collecting about 1% of the visible spectrum. So it blocks a lot of light pollution, which wouldn't necessarily mean much if there wasn't a whole lot to see through that little narrow window of light. But as it turns out, this window is probably the most exciting window in the universe to look through. A hydrogen alpha filter allows the light to pass through that is emitted by hydrogen atoms that have been excited. So they're being bombarded by radiation, generally from hot young stars or in places where stars are dying or dead. So these atoms absorb light, they take on that energy, and then as that energy is re-emitted, depending on the atom, it's emitted at a very specific wavelength, a very specific color of light. And in the case of hydrogen alpha, that's the color of light that this filter is tuned to. So think about it this way. I can block out 99% of Chicago's light pollution and still gather 100% of the light that there is to gather from these deep space objects, even from the heart of the city. That's what makes narrowband imaging from an urban environment so attractive. You're able to image with all that light pollution and even in the night with a full moon. Now, there are a couple of other wavelengths that are common to image in the universe. There's another red color that's emitted by sulfur and some bluish green light that's emitted by oxygen. When I collect light in these colors, I'm able to combine them in various ways with the hydrogen alpha light and make beautiful narrowband images, similar to the ones that got me interested in astrophotography in the first place. Now, there's still a place for broadband or true color imaging. Even from the city, although it's definitely much easier from dark skies. But now when I do get a chance to go to a dark sky, I know exactly what I need to do to make the most of my limited time under those beautiful, pristine dark skies. So I hope this video gave you a clear idea on what goes into these astrophotography images from urban environments. And let me know in the comments where you are on your astrophotography journey, and also what questions you might still have about how you too can take images like this. If you found this video useful, definitely do give it a like, and also don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.